And we're live. <laughs> Good evening, Whiskey Brothers and Sisters, and welcome right. to episode four of the right, Canadian Dolph. Whiskey Journeys Non-Whiskey Review. I'm Dolph. I am your host tonight, and I'm joined by these two cats. That is Blair Phillips and Davin Nicole Jumeau. They are the co-authors sure. to this book right here. The definitive guide to Canadian distilleries. The portable expert to over 200 distilleries and the spirits they make. And if you haven't mm. bought it, you should. Right there. And what we're doing tonight, we're continuing our Canadian non-whiskey journey with a review of Arbutus Distilleries Barrel Aged Baba Yaga Absinthe. And I'll give you a picture of that, please. So here's, here's the original. There's the original one. And that's the packaging. You peel away the packaging and you get the teeth. And that represents that bottle right there. And uh, I'm going to ask Blair. Well, here, here's the article where you're going to go get this article if, you, if you're going to read it. And I really think you should. And that's what it looks like. Blair, could you tell us about the imagery that they use? The witch. It's kind of a, yeah. kind of a neat story. I like that. Yeah, I'll go back a little bit for this one. Uh, so back in the um, 1870s, let's say the 1870s, uh, they didn't have Grateful Dead records and uh, acid back then, so they drank absinthe. And um, what happened was it got a bad reputation. Uh, all the ills of society were all blamed on absinthe. For example, if if someone, if you say murder your wife and the cops said, hey, were you drinking absinthe? And they said, oh, I had it before. They'll go, okay, that's what caused it. And uh, so it was banned internationally, uh, several countries for almost 100 years and in 2005, um, it was legalized again in Canada when they proved that it didn't have any kind of psychotic effects. Um, so th they called it the Green Fairy, riding the Green Fairy, that kind of thing. And Arbutus wanted to um, carve their own story for their own absinthe. So they adopted the Slavic folklore uh, myth of Baba Yaga that I've never heard of before until I talked to uh, <laughs> the distillery. And the story goes that um, this witch-like character um, roams the forest, uh, eating children and picking botanicals. She rides around in a mortar and pestle, uh, has a house with uh, chicken legs on it uh, yeah, that walks good. around behind her. And um, I couldn't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Baba Yaga is Slavic for mother-in-law, but I, I don't have any evidence. <laughs> um, Excellent. And so... So yeah, they, they carved out the path by calling this this absent uh, Baba Yaga. And, uh, and if our mother-in-law are watching this, we love you dearly. However, yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm generally I'm calling you Baba Yaga just for fun. I think that's great. Uh, Blair, you kind of hit the nail on the head for me. I've never tried absent ever until last night. I tried my very first, and it was because the hallucinogenic properties of, I guess, the wormwood. Ooh, so, where are those bats? Where are those bats coming from? <laughs> We, we've had just a little bit before this. It's just a this, bit. Isn't, this isn't a Hunter S. Thompson movie, is it? Nope. <laughs> Blair is... And, well, Davin, I'm wondering, is there enough Wormwood, and I don't even know the name of, of the, the, the chemical in there, but is there enough of that in these to ever make us hallucinate? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think so, but I, I'm distracted yeah. by all those elephants behind you, Dolph. <laughs> so, but no, um, no, I maybe. think, that, no, seriously, uh, uh, I, I imagine that um, you could probably convince yourself to hallucinate on anything, but I think oh, yeah, there yeah, may yeah. be some lead in some of the, uh, some of the uh, cups that they were drinking from. There may have been some lead in the spoons or uh, on the closures. So there, they may have got lead poisoning or something like that, which can cause uh, similar things, but uh, it's not nearly as uh, as much fun as like, 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 well, you know, like when we did LSD when I was at your place, uh, it's just uh, quite uh, quite a different experience with with, with wormwood. Yeah, it's really okay. quite. Uh, I'm glad because it would be a bad thing if I started actually having some type of episode on the air. I, I really don't know what would actually happen. Yeah. Uh, and Devin, well, let's stick with you. You know uh, Michael Pizzatelli, and he's the owner distiller. Uh, and this is what he said in, in the article. You say a lot of our spirits are based on alchemy themes and folklore. And mm. in the article, as well as the book, it, it seems like you agree with the fact that he's an alchemist so you met him does he seem like a crazy mad scientist kind of guy i would not say he was crazy okay 
I would not say he's bad, but I think he is very uh, determined and he's methodical, okay. and he I, he really is interested in the in the science and the not so much the chemistry as the alchemy. And, but the the guy's quite gifted, actually, bringing together all these different flavors, and uh, he, he really uh, he has uh, he has a real knack. Uh, of putting together flavors that, that, that work well together. And I think you'll agree, like, you, you know, you say you, you've never tasted absinthe before. I have to be honest. I don't I don't drink absinthe. I've, it's a, my, only my third or fourth time I've, I've tried absinthe. Okay. But I think that as a whiskey uh, lover, someone who would, uh, you know, w would like to be able to talk intelligently about the flavors in whiskey, there's a lot of value in trying non-whiskey spirits because you learn so much. And if you taste this one, this is, you know, really, if you just want to get right to the core, it's kind of a licorice flavor. But you notice that there are those flavors in there that are, are reminiscent of barrel tones, reminiscent of wood. Okay? Yeah. You've got that there. And you've got some little, some pulling tannins in this. This, this really, I think, is a bit of an exercise in uh, in um, uh, understanding what comes to the uh, to the uh, to the fore from putting it in a barrel. I wish we had, I have another one that uh, came from Mad Lab Mad, Mad Lab uh, Spirits in uh, in um, uh, in uh, uh, Vancouver made a Raki, which is similar to this, but is not barrel aged, okay. and uh, and it really has uh, similar flavors, but much uh, much cleaner. Just as complex, but in a different direction. So, yeah, I, I really, uh, I really quite enjoy this, and I think that Mike is quite talented. Um, he's got. Uh, when I visited, it was the evening, and he has a restaurant in his in, in, in the distillery, and a great big window where you can look back in and see the barrels because he's making whiskey, lots of whiskey. You know, you've got okay. whiskey barrels there, and, and you can see the still and all this. It's really quite, uh, really quite an interesting spot in the Nanaimo. In the Nanaimo. Uh, BC and uh, and they have a whiskey coming out right now. I looked online, so they already have their. I don't know how many years old. If it's three or four years old, but they have a whiskey out now that you can get online as well. So I was kind of interested in going to that and mm -hmm. trying to find that as well. Uh, but gentlemen, we're let's go on to the nose. But I'll, I'll, before we delve into this toothy dram, gentlemen, with a little bit of a bite, yes. Uh, here's a little bit of the information. So the bottle you have is three seventy-five mils. It's thirty dollars. The seven fifty mil that you buy there, not of the barrel age, but the act, the other absinthe, the first two or the first mm -hmm. bottle I showed you, that's forty-five dollars. Uh, it's fifty-six percent. This is aged in a number four charred oak barrel, which means mm -hmm. it's charged for 55 seconds or just burned for 55 seconds. Nice alligator char. And it might explain why it goes from kind of a green tinge to this one, to this, which, and, and I asked uh, Blair and Davin if they see a little bit of green in there and not so much. I think maybe we could coax some green maybe out of it, but what do we think? So gentlemen, on the nose, what do we think? And, and Davin, you've already told us a little bit about the hints coming out, the licorice, the anise, and uh, but it's a sweet licorice. It, it's it's not so much licorice. It really is, um, yeah, anise. You don't. <laughs> I've star of anise I cook with, but but it's 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 got a sweet tinge to it that that mm -hmm. doesn't have. So I don't know if it's like honey. Maybe if I put honey and star of anise together, it would smell something like this. But there's a nice sweetness to it. Yeah, I think I'm very uh, susceptible su to suggestion this evening because yeah, I can smell that honey now too. I once went to a licorice tasting in in Amsterdam. And we had about 20 different licorices. And believe me, the range of flavors is just amazing. You told me that before. And I would love oh. to see this. Because when I think licorice, there might be one or two flavors of licorice. Mm. The little dark ones, candies. And I'm not saying the name of them that we used to call them as a child. But that's horrible. And, uh, but, and then black nibs. But I also had this. And this tastes like it. And I found it last night. No, I'll get to the taste in a second. Blair? Your nose, do you any citrus kind of citrusy? It's yeah, like there's a, a bright citrus note for sure. Okay, but 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 that yeah that that licorice fennel type note is is very high up. Um, mm. 
I, I, I think the other flavors, even, even like I've, I've dumped about four parts water into mine and, and, uh, I find that on the palate that really, that really shifts things into, a, into a new direction. Okay. I'm going to take a sip. Then I'm going to do the, you said four parts, four parts water to one part. Okay. Uh, roughly. Yeah. Is that not excessive or is it, is that the way it's supposed to be? And I'm asking, I don't know. <laughs> no well, if you're, if you're drinking it the traditional way, they, they suggest four to six parts per, per, uh, part of absinthe so because this one's a 56 percent alcohol instead of in the 70s i i would i would dial it back all right so so four parts so let's let's see if we can do that i love your eyedropper holy cow yeah. that's a big eyedropper right? look at <laughs> hudson's bay scotch whiskey i've been looking forever for this whiskey somewhere if you either of you gentlemen can find a hudson's bay whiskey I would love to try it because I've got a lot of paraphernalia, but yeah. none of the whiskey. Did we buy a bottle in Winnipeg? Uh, Calgary. Or Cal oh, Calgary. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. I've been looking for a long time. Anyways, sorry. This changes <laughs> the nose or, or just makes it discernible because it was so powerful before. And my wife needs some, so I have to give it up to her. <laughs> so she has to that. And uh, the taste on it, though, and... I don't know if you've been to a place like it. In Calgary, it's called Heritage Park. Here, it's uh, Fort Edmonton. But it, Upper, Canada it, Upper Canada Village, something like that. Yeah. So you go there and you try. It's a candy, and it looks like a withered stick. And you chew on it, and it's licorice flavored. And that's what the flavor reminded me of. I didn't have, I get the sweetness oh, on the nose, yeah. but that stick reminds me of the palate. So, mm. and um, th I have a friend who makes root beer as well, and he makes oh, a yeah. root beer that uh, tastes very much like this. So yeah. I don't know if that's pushing it too hard. Maybe the the vanilla from the cask or something, but kind of the root no, beer. The, old. Yeah, the root beer note is really prominent on the palate for this one. And there's a Good. there's a a little bit of mint I find as well towards the end, if you if you really dig for it. Devin, you get the mint. I get something fresh on the end too. Not like I a mint gum, but like an actual mint leaf, right? Is what you're thinking of? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And Devin has been trying to convince me, and you heard him in the beginning, trying to try different alcohols to help me out with my my bourbon and my my whiskey nosing and i think this is helping because it's bringing me out of my comfort zone so thank you very much is there a difference between the uh the palette and the finish does it change for either of you the finish is more just a fading mm -hmm. but i'm getting some some peppery notes on it yeah maybe i didn't know maybe i didn't add enough water or, or too much for me. Uh, yeah, the peppery notes on the on the back end for sure. Yeah. So sweet on the nose. Uh, Blair, did you get sweet on the nose? Oh I, yeah. I had honey. I'd like a honey sweetness on the nose. And the anise or or, sorry, you said fennel. Davin said star of anise. I I don't know if I could go. No, I think of fennel with the with the mouthfeel and what it tastes like as opposed to the nose. So I go anise on the nose, fennel on the palate, I can go for, but root beer and those long sticks that you get at Upper Canada Village for you guys or for our places. And the finish, I th Blair, what do you get for finish? Deliciousness. Okay. It's just, it just, it, to me, it's, it, it's kind of tastes like the finish sort of finishes the way that it starts. Like it's, it's just a, uh, a long slow fade on that uh, on those great fennel notes and the licorice and all that kind of stuff okay i know, I, know I, would, I would really encourage people to, to try this I'm, you, I'm sure you can find little bottles somewhere if you don't want to buy a big one but yeah it's i know i highly bucks. recommend it yeah Let's spend the 35 bucks and have this experience because this is a great experience guys yeah and some and i don't know if i'm saying this properly but i think this would be like a late afternoon drink in the sun if it's supposed to be really really cold would that go well i don't know if ice works but 
cold water in the late afternoon sun with that? I think, I think it would be fabulous cold. Yeah. You may want to add a little with bit ice. of sugar, though. Mm. Okay. And we didn't talk about the sugar, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at it. I have the metal thingy for the sugar. but It's called, it's called a spoon. <laughs> it's an ugly looking spoon. We're losing but... you. <laughs> We're losing to the dragon. Yeah, no, right. my my uh my spoon looks like something that the Illuminati will wave at you before they kill you, but nice. um, uh, it's still pretty interesting. Excellent. <laughs> Gentlemen, last thoughts before we sign off. I'm really delighted to see you stretching your palate. And I hope that everybody uh, who's watching this uh, will do the same thing. You don't have to buy uh Baba Yaga, you can try something else, but man, there are so many flavors out there. And once you get those into your palate vocabulary, uh, into your me palate memory, they'll really help you enjoy whiskey if, that, if you're really determined that's what you want to, do, to, want to enjoy. Excellent. Blair? And uh, yeah, Arbutus makes uh, great spirits, period. So if you're into gin, get their gin. If you're into vodka, get their vodka and so on and so forth. And I will get their whiskey. I'm going to try it. And you know what? The bottle is beautiful as well. So we, sh we should give kudos for the artwork because mm -hmm. I do like it. And these are all, although this a little bit scary. <laughs> and it may be an improvement on Davin behind it. Look no. at that. Sorry, Davin. I'm <laughs> kidding. No. All right, guys. I, uh, thought that was, I thought that was my mother-in-law smiling. See you at all me. next week. Bobby Yaga is out there. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic night. And cheers, mm -hmm. guys.